Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Clueless8 and we're going to cover the NASDAQ composite here. Very, very important critical chart um, given that strength in the NASDAQ which I called for uh, more than a week ago, if not two weeks ago, um, when the markets were falling apart. So this is exactly what's going on and let me go over this um, with everyone. Just clean out a little bit here. And I think we're good to go. All right. Here's the NASDAQ. Uh, I'm sorry. This is the Russell 2000. What am I talking about? This is the Russell 2000, the most damaged of all the indices, the most over-leveraged gambling casino, um, you know, which, uh, which basically culminated into a massive drop uh, back uh, on the first uh, week in March, March 4th to be specific. So saying all that, uh, we are on a uh, process here of uh, repairing uh, part part of the damage. Take a good look at this chart. I've made it very clear for everyone to understand. This is November 2012 and here we are in uh, May going into June of 2014. Okay, So here's the Russell 2000 which really cracked. It went below uh, these uh, this triple lane highway uh, channels and, uh, and basically now is attempting to re-enter it okay attempting to re-enter it re-entrance off into the channel into the lower channel is 1165 1163 whatever you call it 1164 I believe it will happen that's just my gut feeling that it will happen uh, given the given the internals which have convincingly turned around you can see that given what happened here back in November 2012 given more importantly what happened here in on the first week in February where again we had a very sharp correction not as sharp as this one however uh, it did turn and then it went to new highs I personally do not believe that the Russell 2000 will go to new highs the reason being quite simple the over leveraged margin junkies that caused the Russell to get up to those levels uh, I don't think will be permitted and when I say permit, it's not that somebody's sitting there saying don't do it, but I think uh, behavioral economics tells me that they are not going to gamble that hard. Uh, the institutions specifically, uh, retail didn't take it up. There's institutions which took it up there, um, even though they like to blame retail, f re retail investors for it. Um, they will not be uh, over leveraged to the point to to go up there I believe we might test the old highs around the 12-14 uh, level uh, which also happens to be the uh, middle channel you know, that's uh, right here so um, is this possible? Sure it's possible uh, do I believe that these lines uh, start to turn around and cross over? We have uh, we have barely gone over. We have gone over the 34 uh, day moving average. Very important line. By now you guys should know that I give a lot of weighting to that. But we are far from the 50 day line which is at 1157. So I believe we at least kiss the, the lower uh, channel at 1160 and I think that happens rather quickly. So we got 20 points from here which can be had on the upside on the downside uh, we all know what the downside is if we break 1120 we're gonna come down and test these levels again can that happen sure it can happen internals don't tell me that otherwise because the on balance volume is uh, is doing quite nicely and the interesting part was that through this whole correction that we had the on balance volume did not plummet and that's very interesting that means somebody out there some invisible hand was actually scooping up a lot of these bargains on some of the select stocks the real companies with real earnings and growth potential um, so this is very interesting here RSI is starting to move up too Bollinger's have uh, Bollinger's is, it's over the Bollinger that's a pretty powerful move the histograms are rising there are you know five days of histograms rising and if you notice here the histograms rose and then even as they were coming down um, well actually histograms rose for a whole bunch of days other than five days here so important to count these bars along the way okay I do the, all the stuff for you guys and that's why you uh, subscribe to some of my intuitive knowledge of reading these charts so it's looking good 
I believe we test this and we come in and if we do enter this channel we're gonna make a beeline to get up to by the 1200 level or at least um, at least up towards 1190 okay so there's money to be made here very volatile um, obviously be flexible but I don't see any dramatic move down unless we break below I repeat again we break below right here 1120 that's 20 Russell points and if we break that we are going to test the lows so let's keep an eye on that let's quickly look at the next one which is uh, the I had the IBB here but it looks like it's disappeared this is the IWM but we have already covered the Russell so I'm going to change this to the biotech index bingo it's changed okay this is give me a second to set this up All right. This is the biotech index going back to. Let me go back to November. Okay, November 2012. Let me draw the line quickly and explain what's going on. If you notice this chart is a little bit different because of this huge hump which shouldn't have happened and if you notice this uh, standard deviation away from this channel line uh, is very similar to where you know this the distance between this uh, the distance the length of this fall between the channel is the same as the rise here you know very simple mathematical correlation so what is it telling me this is telling me I can't even draw a uh, middle line here well I can actually let me see create a parallel line okay we're there alright so here we are this was an excessive optimism ex irrational exuberance whatever you wanna call it pure gambling uh, on a lot of biotech stocks um, and uh, and then came the correction which wiped out all that and then the reversal bar and now we are here so it looks very likely that we're gonna come back and test the upper end of this channel the top channel which is around 255 okay I doubt if we're gonna eclipse and go to new highs on this because there's nothing here uh, on a mathematical basis that tells me that I can go there uh, I can draw this which would be taking a lot of liberty uh, and say that we could very well if we get up here would be the new high um, it's possible but uh, I doubt it okay um, a lot of people a lot of institutions got burnt um, when they crossed over into this hump uh, as as they played on leverage like no one's business and I don't think they at this quickly they're gonna forget that uh, burning sensation uh, when they got you know toasted in the fire with the forced selling and the institutional margin calls so saying all that I believe we get to the upper Bollinger on the short term which is around 245 uh, and then you know we could very well go up here so this is also looking good but here is the negative divergence unlike the other charts as you clearly saw this OBV on balance volume never really recovered so even though we're seeing a MACD crossover we're seeing the histograms nicely moving up we're not seeing a large money flow or positive buying volume it's just starting to curl up so unless this blue line really starts to move up as we saw on the Nasdaq going like this uh, on the Russell going like that on the uh, going you know on a 45 degree angle up we're not seeing that on the biotech index so that's telling me something that's telling me that there's a lot of cautious players in that game and uh, this is not something that uh, has the enough oomph to really do what it needs to do so unless the OBV starts to really curl up and uh, really move into a positive direction I am not going to think I, I don't think we're going to be uh, in that good a shape um, like the other indices like the Nasdaq and the Russell 2000 um, which have shown some pretty incredible um, recovery so that's it for the indices for tonight I'm going to go ahead and cover a few stocks now